So I've often wondered where I've got my love of travel from. Is this a genetic thing? And my, my parents didn't seem to have much desire to travel. I mean, they both went overseas, but they have never ever traveled to the extent that I've traveled. I seem to be unique in my family. Um, my children seem to have inherited my travel genes. So the question is, where did I get my travel genes from? So I decided to do one of these DNA tests. So I did it through Ancestry.com to see whether I had people who loved travel in my genes. So I did my research and um, finally decided on Ancestry.com, sent off for the kits. Uh, Within a week or so it arrived and I had to take the tube out, gather some saliva and um, put some little potion stuff with it, wrap it all up and send it off in its prepaid box and wait to get the results back. Um, I had a holiday in between, so it actually arrived when I was away. So I got my results back from Ancestry.com and I'm going to share them with you. So I had sent off for my um, DNA and it the results came back and I used Ancestry.com and they notified me um, by um, email that my results were in. So if I open Ancestry.com and I sign in and I go to DNA, my DNA results summary, and that will come up and yep you can see that it comes up that I am 54% Germanic Europe 21% Ireland and Scotland and eight other regions so I can click on my DNA story to get more of a breakdown And it'll come up and you can see that um, there's the 54% Germanic Europe and 21% uh, Ireland and Scotland, which for me was quite interesting because um, I've got two great grandfathers that came from England and I don't seem to have any relatives that I know of that came from Ireland or Scotland yet I'm if you look here it's only showing me as 2% English so that was quite interesting how that came about I don't know I don't know what those Irish did but yeah my English ancestors seem to be more Irish um, another interesting one that I didn't have any idea about was Sweden, 10% Sweden, and I'm not sure. I'll show you my family tree and I'll show where I think that might come in, but that one I'm not too sure about. Southeast Asia was another interesting one for me. Um, Southeast Asia and the Philippines together and Melanesia um, because... I think that that must be um, Cape Malay um, ancestors that I must have. They were brought across to from in this sort of area by the Dutch as slaves, so I must have a slave ancestor there. 
and then I've got 1% East Africa, 1% uh, Cameroon, Southern Bantu, and based in, uh, yeah, 3% France, that I know um, the French ancestors. But the interesting thing is that, I don't know, I mean, I knew about the German Dutch, I didn't know about the Ireland, Scotland, I didn't know about the Sweden, I suspected uh, the Cape Malay, but the very interesting thing is that when I sent my um, DNA kit in, it go, you send it to Ireland, and I sent it from Norway, and I've got a Dutch surname, and so you wouldn't think that they would be able to work out where you originally come from, from your DNA, but they did. They picked up straight away that, as you can see, that I'm a South African. So, yeah, that came up with my DNA. So if you look over here, uh, going back into the DNA, you can find uh, the DNA story that's just sort of like a generic thing about all the different areas. But the DNA matches that uh, shows you people whose yeah, DNA are a match. Um, this person over here, uh, Mongi, I know that uh, I think my grandfather's sister married a Mongi, so that would be um, how that one comes in. And um, my uh, grandmother's half-sister was um, this guy's grandmother, I think. So, grandmother, yeah, grandmother. Or mother, I can't remember. I don't know, but there is a, definitely a relation there, which I think is seemed like to be closer than fourth to sixth cousin and yeah these are all people you can see there's another mongi like surnames and then there if you click on them it'll actually tell you if um you have a surname in common so say for instance i click on this person over here they say they can't find any common ancestors and then it'll come up with some of their surnames and the only shared surname we have is Hilton so maybe we are related let's see I don't know so I've got a James Hilton and a Mary Hilton so there's a Mary Hilton's different um, different death date but they must have been related way back. So this is actually quite amazing. But I have to tell you, this whole Ancestry.com is, yeah, it's a bit of a rabbit hole. You start clicking on things and one thing opens and the next thing opens and before you know it, five hours has gone past. So this is uh, my family tree. But if I, um, yeah, if you sort of look at it, uh, some of the names change. Like this one, uh, Stefan. But if I click on Stefan, you can see that originally it looks like in the 1700s, early 1800s, the surname wasn't Stefan, it was Stefani. So, um that comes up but what happens if I click on okay this is Philippus de Toy now when you see these little green leaves this is a hint and if you click on the hints it'll come up with some ancestry hints and you can see I can look at this is Johannes Francois de Toy and there's a member photo. Do I want to save a photo of like a DNA strand? No, so I'll ignore it. 
but I can see over here there's something with his estate. I can look at that, find out information, or I can uh, look at other members' family trees who have the same ancestor. So if I click on review, then this will come up, and then this will show me. Um, I can see, right, I'm missing that information over here, which was his date of birth and his death date. So I'll see, okay, he had a daughter, Engela, he had a, well, he had a spouse, Engela, but he seems like he was also married to a Susanna. So if I click over here and then review selected tree hints, then I can now add in the new information. So I've got him where he was married to the Susanna Gietre de Toy. I don't know. There she is over there. And then this Engela Haupt. So he was obviously married twice. And then his children come up there. So I can, all this new information now where I've got dates of the marriages, where I've got his date of birth, and I've got the date of his death. I can save that now, and I click on Save to Your Tree. So now that information will be included. But if I go back here, and I go back to my tree, I want to show you what a nightmare this can turn to be. Because honestly, you sit and five hours later, and you can still be doing this. Okay, so I've clicked on this Peter de Toy, and it goes on to other people in the family. You can see there's more hints, and it goes way back. But if I go now to this Abram de Toy at the top here, and I click there, you can see there um, his parents come up. If I look at this DuPont, you can see this one goes even further. So you can actually end up going really far back. This is now going back into the 1400s. And this one's got a little link that might give me the name of a parent. So I would look, could look over here and review and you see right here they're giving some information 14 see if I look at this 1497 I really don't think um, that his father could be born or maybe I suppose could be born 1497 they've got him born as 1530 so you sometimes need to check um, when they give parents, it doesn't always fit. But if you keep looking over here, okay, I just want to see. So if I click on, uh, I've just clicked on this Barbie Polet. And you can see someone has obviously um, done some research and Ancestry has now picked up a new potential mother. So this is where you go down the rabbit hole. So now they found a mother. So that sort of date fits in. So I will say yes. And then what often happens is that you get another hint coming from that, which will then give... Yeah, just like this. You see what I mean? It's now given a potential father and mother for this person. And it, you will just keep on clicking and going further and further back. And you are using their database um, from, yeah, people who've uploaded their DNA and their family trees. 
So, okay, it looks like I might stop over there at this stage. But next week, someone might have uploaded something and then I'll get a hint to click on and then more information coming. So it can be never ending. So you can see here, let's look at this mother. That's going to, oh, let's click again. Okay, so I'm not too sure now because this mother for him and the mother for the wife, it's the same mother. So I'm, I need to research that a little bit more. So I might just ignore that hint because, yeah, either it's a brother and a sister that got married or, I don't know, they, someone's got wrong information. Yeah, it's the same. So his parents are exactly the same as her parents. So I don't think that that's right. So I need, I will take those two out and then rather add them over here. But if I click on this hint now, you can see there's one ancestry hint. And that someone's got her in a family tree. So there's 10 other people actually with her in the family tree. Let's see if they've got any information I haven't got. They've got when she was married. But there's no mother and father over here. So if I want to get the marriage date, where's the one that had the marriage date? Up here somewhere, there. So if I want to get the marriage date, then I will click there, review the selected tree, and then there's the marriage date is added in, and then I can save to my tree. So this is how you use the family tree and, yeah, lose many hours of your life. It's quite addictive, I have to tell you. So I th need to fix this up over here. But if I had to go down and look at some others down here, for instance, you can see there's some coming up over here, some more hints. So if I click there, there's one ancestry hint. And this is showing some records or whatever that's got his address where he stayed. I can decide whether I want to review that and add that um, into... I suppose you can call my shoebox or whatever with his information. So this shows you exactly he was on the juror lists over there. So if I click yes, and now his address that where he comes up, where he was living will come up. So I can save that to my tree. So this is definitely um a way to find out more about your family and where you've come from and yeah I I decided to do this because I love traveling and I thought maybe I can find out if I had any ancestors who like traveling and seeing that I've got different ancestors who um traveled around the world to get to South Africa, I would say that obviously the travel gene and the being prepared to leave your home and your comfort zone uh, must be in my DNA because I have so many people that have traveled. Okay, so these are children these neutral these must be new children that I haven't got information so I can add this into my family as yeah relatives of relatives 
that's why I say this is like a rabbit hole. You just start going down it and it is, you just don't stop. So if you have any um, relations similar to my relations and uh, you've started a tree and you need to know more information, please contact me. And if you know anything about this Arthur Edward Vine, he came to South Africa, I think, when he was about 20. So he came to South Africa in about the year 1900. And he came from Britain. That's all I know is that he was British. I don't know where he came from. I don't know who his parents were. So if anybody knows anything about Arthur Edward Vine, I'd love for them to contact me because, as you can see, He's spoiling my whole family tree. I've got like a big gap here. The other person that uh, I'm stuck on is this Lawrence Peterson. I know absolutely nothing about him other than he had a child with this Elizabeth Ward. Um, I don't know. He could be Lars Peterson. Who knows? And maybe this Peterson is where I'm getting my 10% Swedish from, because otherwise I don't know. So if you recognize any names here, if you know anything, or if you want to find out more about some of these ancestors that I have, um, yeah, please contact me and share, and we can maybe develop our trees a little more. This person came from Ireland. That I find out. This is John Ward. He's the only person I know of that came from Ireland. So I don't know how I'm 21% Irish. But that's all for today. So if you have enjoyed, please like and uh, subscribe to my channel.